Oh, drat, I was driving along minding my own business when that vulgar leech hit my beamer with his pickup truck. I fear I've fractured my clavicle. I say, old boy, don't simply put it in the hands of your insurance company to sort it out. Talk with the dedicated road solicitors at the Advocates Law Firm. Pipe down, you old sod. The Advocates will see your case through to the bitter end and won't sleep a fortnight until they have victory in their grasp. Jolly good, old man. Jolly good indeed. You get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land. The podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Tell them more from this Reddit thread about dumb things you did as a kid that you realized were dangerous. I can relate to this one. I did it. I wanted to be Mary Poppins. I took my dad's umbrella, held it aloft, and jumped off the roof of the woodshed. It was about eight <laughs> feet off the ground. You did it with what? A golf umbrella? I did. Yeah. How did it work? Not real well. <laughs> it was a rancher, though, fortunately, so it was only one story. Okay, that's better. Probably jumped about uh, nine feet or so. <laughs> Me and my uh, sister would stay in the car when my mom went grocery shopping. We'd put the car in neutral and let it roll backwards. And one of us would get out and push it back. Jeez. We didn't realize this could cause an accident in the parking lot. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, I stuck a key in a plug outlet once. It made a spark. The lights flickered and it charred the key. And that outlet was never usable anymore. I'm thinking I dodged a big bullet. I think so. Yeah. Our question. Looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would be considered stupid and or dangerous? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, George Ann. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Well, I'll try not to sound like a transformer, but I am a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Grew up in eastern Washington, a lot of irrigated farmland, and the irrigation water would run through the canals, of course, but when they hit a hill, they had to travel downward, the water, and so we would climb up to these hundred foot long concrete spillways and we'd ride those bitches down. <laughs> Were you doing just body surfing or did you have like an inflatable raft you would use? Oh no, just our asses. Uh, and our you. parents uh, always knew when we'd been there because we'd come home with torn up cut offs, you know. But down at the bottom of these, there were these circular long tines, metal, thick metal tines that went around to catch all the weeds and stuff that come down the sure. water. So we always had a rope to grab about maybe six feet in front of the tines. But sure enough, every summer, somebody got ripped up. <laughs> oh, I bet. How bad was the damage to the person who went through and hit the tines? Oh, usually off to the emergency if you got hospitalized. <laughs> mm -hmm. That sounds about right. How old were you when you were doing this? Oh, about age 10 to 15. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's about right. Yeah. I mean, that's the age you do it. It's Look, always. Man, it, it's, it, we had streams around our home that were just flowing streams. But, you know, you get a storm uh, in the spring or in the fall or whatever and you get heavy rain. And those streams would, would rise up to the point where, you know, we grab rafts. Yeah, and you're right. Especially in like late, early, like late summer, early fall, we would go down. I mean, anything we could find. It was an inflatable raft for somebody's pool. Anything that you could blow up, mm -hmm. uh, somebody would use. And you know, even if you just put a life vest on and basically just kind of floated down. Sure. People do it all the time. There's obviously trees that overhang and you know, there's pools where you could get sucked in and but all kinds of dumb stuff. But that's what made it fun. Right? The fact that there's kids, inherent yeah. danger, that's what makes you want to. Because otherwise, it's just like, do you want to float down a river? No. Hey, man, there's trees hanging down. There's mm. pools. Count me in, right? Yeah, I remember what, sitting in a gutter. Like. <laughs> When it was a big rainstorm, there was like so much water. Let's go, let's go sit next to the curb. Why not? Let's see what you go wrong. Nobody will slide off the road and hit you. Right. Or and there's no chance any of this filthy water from the road is going to end up in an orifice. Well, mm -hmm. we, uh, 
when we first moved to Colorado, it was a new housing development. They built it in the middle of a prairie. So there's rattlesnakes everywhere. And we've been through this before, but we had rattlesnake drills. Kids knew what to do uh, in the instance they were bitten by a rattlesnake. And it's pretty simple stuff to follow. But as a result, none of us were particularly scared of rattlesnakes. You weren't looking to get bitten, but they just didn't freak you out at all. But then they would up it a notch. So where they planned on continuing to build a community. They had done, done some infrastructure work, but there's no houses yet. But there's all these empty pipes that were collected with water. And, like, we'd all go down. The kids would climb into pipes, usually about eight feet long, right? they go from one side of this little hill to another to see if you could find rattlesnakes. And about 20% of the time, mm-hmm. people did. And we knew they did when they screamed and got bitten. But, again, the kids were so calm, like, all right, well, Billy's out. Yeah. Someone just get him home. And we, the parents would take him. We'd go caving. In caves where we had no idea. Like, we, we had a couple caves uh, that we knew pretty well. Sure. From being in there a number of times. But there was a bunch of others that were not as well known. People said, don't go in those caves because they're a little bit more dangerous for whatever reason. We didn't care. Of course Because we had all the gear. Because, you know, we grew up in a mining area. So it was really easy. Probably to go in a garage, right? Go to one of your dad's, you know, one of your friend's dad's. He's got like six or seven hard hats. He's got, you know, he's got a, a, a light with, a, you know what I mean, either a battery pack or a gas-powered light. We would go caving for you know hours, which was great. But we would get in there, and we would get you know we would just get turned around. And so basically, it was just like, oh god, your heart starts palpitating. Like this does not look familiar. <laughs> trying to get out of here, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> like you know, it, it might have been twenty minutes to get out, or, or maybe an hour. But it seemed like you were in there for five hours. You know, it just seemed like, is this it? Yeah, when you think you're going to die. You're, you're crawling down chimneys, and you're going through, like, small areas that are only, like, a foot tall, so you're on your stomach, and you can't remember where that seam is, because what it looks to be is not the same as it was. So you, you go through a wider opening and end up in a different room, and then you're like, oh. Anybody ever get stuck? Like, any time I watch these explorers, it's, it's always, like, archaeologists, right? No. So they're like, they find an opening to whatever, and they just sit down flared, and someone goes down the rope. But there's always a point where it's like, hey, man, this is a... Uh, I'm wider oh, than the path. The, right? the worst, the worst one was was that uh, there was three of us going down this chimney. The chimney is exactly what you think it is. It's a chimney. So you're going down a hole, and basically you put your back up to the one side of the wall. You put your feet up. You brace yourself, and you walk your way down yeah. the chimney. Okay. So my buddy Brett goes first, and like anything else, you're just kind of looking in front of you, and, and and your light's shining in front of you. You're looking footholes. You're looking for handles. He's not looking down. So he and we're not using ropes. And and Brett's like, stop, 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 stop. And I'm like, what, dude, what? And so he stops, he braces himself, and he looks down, and where this uh, chimney emptied was into a large room. But the problem was, we were coming down through the ceiling, and the room was 25 feet high. So we're (laughs) coming down through the top of it, and now we have to slowly walk our way back up, which is much harder to do than going down. And it's like, it's slick, it's clay, it's just, you know what I mean? You're constantly slipping, and he's freaking the hell out, man, because it it was like down into a stream. And you guys are above him. Oh, we're above him. So no matter what happens. We've got to work our way up. Like, all of us got to get the hell out of there, you know what I mean? And try to figure out. But you get a little buffer. Like, for him, it's like, hey, guys, I really really need you two to put some back into this. How are you going to get back out without ropes? Well, yeah. when you're going down, typically, if there's water. So once we heard water in a stream, typically that water is going to run out of the cave someplace. So right. you can find your exit if you can right. just find water. So that was our theory all the time. If you can find the stream, you can find a way out, even if it's not the way that you came in. Well, you can find it, but it's 25 feet below you well, is the problem. And sometimes those streams would run, and they would go into into a wall. Right. And the hole would be underneath. So you might be able to like navigate and go four or five feet and pop out on the other side. But you were underwater doing it. Yeah. So nobody wanted to do that because, you know, we have lanterns on and battery packs and all these things that if you get in there, then you're not going to be able to see for the rest of the time. <laughs> so I was like, do we take this risk? Because we know where that water shoots out. But how far is it? Is it right, right, a right. mile? Is it 10 feet? Is it 5 feet? I mean, who the hell knows? Uh, looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would be considered stupid or dangerous? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Hiron. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Well, when I was uh, in ninth grade, my brother Steve had one of those shotgun reloaders that you fill with gunpowder, and we would take the shotgun shells and put fuses in them and fill it up full of gun paper and wrap it up in duct tape and blow uh, garbage cans about 30 feet up in the air. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, 4F, 4F gunpowder is an amazing thing. If you give children gunpowder, they're going to make things blow up. You can't help yourself. And, and I'll tell you what, where I grew up, everyone, most people's dads had a workstation to, to, to do ammo. So right. that was all just kind of sitting on a workbench someplace. 
Yeah, it was it was quite fun, and then we then we upgraded to uh, sodium phosphate and, and chloral nitrate. <laughs> Jeez, what brought all of this to an end? Cops get called, somebody get hurt, or you just walk away from it? Oh uh, no, my neighbor. He was this old veteran, and he actually had a real cannon, and we were lighting off bombs, and and then he said, "Well, that's nothing," and he lit off this cannon. And then the cops came, and that was the end of it. Also, the older oh, neighbor, dude. the response right, yeah. <laughs> He had a cannon. Like, who has a cannon? Him. I mean, you can't get on Amazon and buy a cannon, right? I don't know. Oh, this, was, this was one of those Korean World War II ones with the big wheels and everything. I bet if I type in Canon Amazon that I'll have, like, a knock on my door later on tonight. Let's see if they sell. I bet you that you can get yourself a Canon. Oh, they're going to, yeah, it's going to be a... Camera. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a camera. Ah, there you go. Go figure. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, there's got to be Canons they sell. I think it's state sure. by state. Like, like down in Arizona, you can own, like, anything. Yeah, they don't care. Hmm. Okay. Would you buy a Canon? I just, I just wondered if that was something that one could, build, you know, pick up at a Walmart. Well, I feel like we were growing up, and it sounds stupid. Now that I'm thinking back, I probably knew three different people the course of 15 years that own cannons. And now in my modern life, I don't know anyone that owns cannons. So, like, yeah, where were people buying these cannons? You can buy cannon balls. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, eight, home cannon with There's balls. There's a cannon. There, there you go. You can buy one for fifteen hundred dollars. You yeah. can buy a cannon. Home cannon. Because every home needs a, a cannon. cannon. That's right. Good God. <laughs> Might have to get one now. Hello, Nate. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hola. Hola. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's funny. Like, I definitely played the lawn darts game. But uh, the stupid thing that I did was uh, well, I grew up in Colorado. And in the 90s, when they would... Uh, plow the roads, they'd only plow the main ones. And so the side ones get this nice packed, icy like, snow pack on there. So, in high school, we thought it would be genius to uh, hang on to the back of trucks and see how fast we could slide around just wearing uh, regular, like, uh, like Doc Martin boots. Sure. With that hard rubber sole. So you're like, you're like stand-up water skiing, but on snow that was ice. Basically, hold, and it started off with just holding on to the, the the back of the truck. Then it moved, progressed to pulling yourself up along the side, seeing how far you could go, how fast the truck could go. Um, I mean, we we got up to about forty five miles. Did you ever eat it? Did you ever injure yourself? Um, yes. <laughs> how bad? Uh, what, what, um. Well, probably should have gotten. Stitches, but um, didn't want to get in trouble from the parents. So um, it was one of those nights where we were trying to impress a girl. So I figured, you know, in high school, so I should do something stupid. That'll impress her. Always. And so what we did is, you know, if you saw dry spots up down, up the road, you'd start banging on the back of the car. Well, this particular night, they are bumping a bunch of music, and I'm banging on the back of the car from the slow down, and they're just going faster and faster. So I finally let go, and I see this dry spot go right on the car. I look down, it hits my feet, and wham, right on my chin. Oh. Right open. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's um, amazing so you're still alive. I to the hospital, went, went home, and, you know, lied to the parents. Said, oh, I was playing on the frozen lake and just slipped. That's all. And just. That's all it is. Visiting it during the holiday break and just got blood pouring down my chin. It was great. Yeah, you can't downplay the injury because they can see it, but you have to lie about how it happened. And that's just yeah, one of those if things. They knew what we were doing, we'd get in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's exactly yeah. What, man. Yeah, the time I split my head open, really wide open, a guy had a big whammo frisbee. We're in a church parking lot. He had another little frisbee inside, right? All right. He whizzes this thing. This kid's like, you know, 19, 18 years old. I'm like 12. We're all still out there playing, you know what I mean? So he wings this thing just for a group of us kids. I'm not paying any attention. The two Frisbees stayed together. I turned around. This thing hits me square <laughs> in between the eyes. <laughs> and I mean, it, it opens up both of my uh, both of my eyebrows. I got blood running down. I got like a little flap here, you know what I mean? And, I, and, and you know, both of my eyes start swelling shut. Of course. I'm of getting course. The, uh, the cranium thing or the uh, like the overhead awning thing going on with my forehead is coming down over my eyes like, you know, Frankenstein or whatever. So I go home and I'm like, Mom, you know, like I, I think I need to get stitches from that. She's like, what happened? I'm like, I got hit in the head of the frisbee. <laughs> 
She's like, you did not get hit in the head with a frisbee. A frisbee would never do that to someone. I'm like, now you're at an impasse. Right. Like, it's like, Jesus, I've told yeah, you right, the truth. Right. Yeah, right. Like, this time I'm telling the truth. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, I, and why would you, like, in my life, I didn't have to lie about an injury. Like, if, if we were jumping bikes and you break a collarbone, yeah, we put right, set up a Jumping bikes, sure. Jumping bikes, broke a collarbone. You know, they would do everything else. They would put, like, a nine-foot flag on the back of your bike in case you're riding on the street. Mm -hmm. No need to wear a helmet or anything. They would make sure that you had the proper reflective gear on your bike just in case you were riding at night, which they didn't encourage either. Right. But you had all the other things, but they didn't care if you like tried to jump a stream. No, not at all. You know what I mean? It was just like, as long as people can see you with this giant orange flag sticking out of your bike, you know, like that was the most important safety aspect of, of riding a bike back in the day. Oh, yeah. Well, and I mean, made your bike badass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and kids just do stuff you wouldn't do as an adult. And it's only because we already did them as kids. And yeah, I mean, even just like playing basketball. Like, now, can you imagine if you're playing hoops and you go up for a jump shot and somebody just pushes you? You could get like seriously mm -hmm. injured. Yeah. Oh, there'd but be like, a fight, right? Well, with like my cousins and my, like, that's what we did in the backyard. I always wonder is because we were shorter and we were closer to the ground that it didn't hurt as bad. You know, like the fall I think wasn't, that's the fall a lot of us, yeah. man. <laughs> to be honest to God, because I always make the dumb analogy like, I used to go to the beach in Ogo Ocean City, and it'd be like, man, when I was seven years old, man, these waves are huge. Right. And it's like, no. Yeah, now they're just so much smaller. It's like, yeah, you're six feet tall now, dude. <laughs> but <laughs> that wave hits you at that age. It's right. much different oh, yeah. than when it hits you at this age. I, yeah, I mean, we used, to, we used to go visit family that lived up in New Hampshire. All right. So, But we only did it when I was very little. So for years, I'd be like, yeah, New Hampshire, if you go to stay at a lake there, they're really deep. Somebody's like, what do you mean they're deep? And it's like, you can only go a few feet in yeah. for it to, and they're like, right, again, you were four yeah, or five. Four years and old. If, and if you went into the Atlantic Ocean, the way the waves worked there, it wasn't like the Pacific Ocean, where if you go out to, to seaside or uh, ocean shores, you see the rolling waves are coming in. They look like steps. You know what I mean? Right. Well, on the Atlantic, they pretty well they just, show up. They roll and dump. <laughs> they just come up, man, and they roll and dump. And if you're out there on a boogie board or you're body surfing or whatever, you get dumped. I mean, you get dumped to the point yep. where you get slammed into the bottom of the ocean. Many times. I mean, head first, like, boom. And then you get tumbled, all right? It's like you just got put in a blender. And then you'd get up and, like, try to get the water out of your eyes and out of your throat and everything else. Like, wah, 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 wah. you've been rolling under there. You you tried to swim up and you hit the ground. You hit the floor of the, of the ocean. Many times. Because you, you, you didn't you know which no way You have no idea what direction. And you steady yourself with your hands and go, okay, I need to push up this way, which makes you feel like you're pushing back down, but you're not. And then you pop up and you shake it off and you go back out and you do it again. And your parents don't even pay a damn thing. They attention. don't care. They don't even realize... <laughs> That you're out there. You know what your parents yeah. tell you when this happens? Because it happens probably every five times you go out there, right? Because, I mean, these waves, seriously. And, I mean, you can feel the sand, sandblast in your face. You're, like you said, you're just getting pressed into the bottom of the ocean. You don't know which way's up. But inevitably, when you finally pop up and get air, you hear your father like, Hey, pull up your trunks. Because mm -hmm. the other thing, <laughs> dude, seriously, it knocks your right. shorts off. And of don't you. forget you about You will see my, more my. penis and vagina on these coat. And not because they're trying to show and you. And you just, don't forget about the boogie board, and now you're three lifeguard stands <laughs> right. down the beach. Thank you. And you got to walk you. all the you way back. You don't realize, you don't realize that the current is taking you <laughs> right. 300 yards down the shore. Yeah, you're just so cruising you, in the waves. You're eight years old, you get out and look for your, uh, you can't even recognize the hotels that are in front of you. You're like, that doesn't look like where we're staying. And when you're a 10-year-old kid on a crowded beach like that, like, there's a lot of people that look like your parents. Yeah, I exactly. watched my kids panic. We're in Mexico. I said, no, nah, give them a second. You could <laughs> see you could <laughs> see the desperation. Same thing. The current had taken them down mm -hmm. a bit. I said, we got our eye on it. I said, just let them panic a bit. They saw us. I've never seen so much relief. <laughs> Looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would be considered stupid or dangerous? 206-421-ROCK. Hey, all of it, all of it. Thank you so much for listening to the Men's Room Podcast. And thanks to our pals at the Advocates Law Firm for being great partners. Yes, even you, creepy, creepy, creepy Kyle. Seriously, though, if you'd been injured as a result of somebody else in your car, on your bike, walking across the street, talk to our friends at the Advocates Law Firm and let them help you out. Yeah, they're the best injury lawyers around, and they want to make sure that you're not taken advantage of. Plus, your first consultation is free. It's simple. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact them today at AdvocatesLaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. 
Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. 99.9 KISW. The men's room is in progress. Men's room original ale. Brand new beer from Elysian is uh, is out there. It is back. That is the original beer that Elysian first made That's for That's right. Way before the men's room original red, and we brought back the men's room original ale. And in the spirit of the original ale, only making a small batch at first and only serving on tap at a very uh, select number of locations. Those locations were uh, selected based on the fact that they sold the most men's room red. Had it on the handle for the longest amount of time mm-hmm. and gave more money to our friends at the Fisher House. This beer also, a uh, portion of the proceeds goes to our friends at the Fisher House as well. And we know one of the places is already sold out. Yeah, Got absolutely. an email from, yeah. I can't remember the location, but a guy mm-hmm. emailed today and said, they're, they're already out. Uh, Mike, so were you, uh, you. where were you this weekend? You were at the uh, the Loose Wheel Bar and Grill in Tacoma, is that correct? No, the, the, the Top Gun. Oh, you're at the Top Gun? Yeah. In uh, Puyallup. How many did you get down? Oh, at least two. At least two. Yes, boy. So that means All four. Right. So there's about 15 locations that are carrying the Men's Room Original uh, Ale, and that uh, complete list of bars and restaurants in your area is at KISW.com. You're going to love it, so get in and, uh, and try a pint or two. All right, question. Looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would be considered stupid or dangerous? 206-421-ROCK. One quick comment here. says, hello, Men's Room. My name is Ty from Tacoma. Hi, Ty from Tacoma. What's up, Ty? What up? Uh, and when we were kids, we used to play a game called Bee Roulette, where we would take turns throwing rocks at uh, a bee or wasp nest to see who can stay in the same place the longest. Whoever did that wins. Well, this all ended. Well, my cousin got stung 27 times, had to go to the hospital. Oh, he won. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my brother playing that, and I decided I did not want to play that. And he, with his other two friends, basically I walked back into the house to a cascade of them calling me chicken. And within five seconds, I heard one of them scream at the top of the lungs, looked out the window, watched all three of them racing around. And by the time they got into the garage, probably each one stung about 15 times. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm chicken. I'm also smart. Hello, Nick. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 What's going on, guys? How are you, sir? I'm well. Thanks for asking. I hope you guys are enjoying the weather today. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's nice weather. It's, it's a bomb no 68 doubt. here in the studio. It's beautiful. Air conditioning yeah, working. Yeah. The whole deal. Oh, man. So uh, you'll never guess what my favorite toy was as a kid. You're right. It, yeah. Uh, the uh, light, light, light bright. Uh, fire. Easy bake oven. Uh, the Barbie we got with you're, the dog that poops. Mm-hmm. You're close with the fire. It was a machete. Like an actual machete. Yep. How? An actual machete. I think it was about four inch grip and like 10 inch blade. And how old were you when you determined this was your favorite toy? Uh, seven and a half. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just after the fire. <laughs> from fire so, to machete the perfect age for machete yeah yeah so instead of playing lawn darts uh i used to throw that straight up in the air and wait for it to come down before i jumped out of the way all right yeah did you ever get hit no 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 but i did have a really good friend of mine who now has a doctorate in geology that used to stand really close to me and i wouldn't tell him i'd throw it and then i'd throw it and shove him out of the way kind of pushing me out of the way too Okay, was so this you're the, kind of a hero. Was this the beginning of dumb decisions throughout your life, or did you uh, eventually uh, kind of tone it down a bit? Oh, I'm, I'm, no, 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 absolutely not. I don't drink or do any drugs, but I'm like, I jump out of cars while they're moving. Real dumb tattoos. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a it's a through thread throughout my life. But like you know, like look, mm-hmm. I could drink and do drugs, but I, I'm going to save my stupidity for other things. Right. I respect yeah, yeah. that, and that way I have no excuse. It's never hold my beer. You're like hold my sprite. Like mm-hmm. really, sprite. Oh, yeah, it's, oh. Uh, you know, I'm oh, gonna man, drink I this go sprite. Ride the whips. Yeah, it's, it's. I want to ghost ride the whips. So let's jump out at 22 miles an hour. Well, well a, man, there is something about, especially as a child, throwing things up in the air, knowing that they're mm-hmm. dangerous on rocks, lawn darts, you name it. At some point, like when the game kind of broke down, you're just bored. You sure. got to kill five minutes. Like, hey, take this big ass rock, throw it as high up in the air as you can, and. You know, last person moves the winner. Well, a lot of times the winner is also the loser because it's like, hey, credit. 
You're brave. Mm-hmm. You didn't move, but we're going to get your mom because you might have to go to the hospital. I'm not sure the technical term for this, but uh, a bunch of my friends growing up had kind of like martial art weapons. I'm not sure what the oh, yeah, the was. Jugs, yeah, throwing nunchucks, stars. Nunchucks, throwing stars, yeah. like these all big poles stuff. that had like, you know, spears at the end of them, all these yeah. things. And I mean, you remember the Rambo knife? It was targeted oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. specifically it had a com- to kids. Com- compass on the bottom of had it. The compass had, uh, yeah, and I mean, like, you're, you're, your parents would not know where to order the straw Saw on the back side. But if you bought, like, Mad Magazine or comic books, and keep in mind, then comic books were read specifically by kids, right? It's those kids that now are the adults that read them. But you flip to the back, and it's like the Rambo knife, right? So six-inch knife. Inside was like a rope saw. Inside Everyone, was a rope saw. Also a small bit of a fishing line. It's like a survival knife. So yeah. a small bit of a I fishing got one. string. I had to have it. Had yeah, to it's have always funny, too. Hook, that match, people have to have that stuff. You do. Like when there was survival kid, stuff I liked as a kid, like it, I was nowhere in a survival like environment. You lived in the middle of the goddamn city. Yeah. yeah, we we were not in the city at that point, but there was no lack of people living around us. Right. But we had to have this knife. The good news is that knife was so goddamn dull it was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. But it didn't make it any less dangerous. Mm-hmm. We had wood paneling in our uh, in our first apartment, and so the guy who had all this stuff growing up, that you know, he was a collector of all that stuff. We had a dartboard. So, you know, throwing stars into the dartboard, that, that was that was a lot. I mean, you, you learn how to throw them overhand. Did you get any good Sideway. At it? I mean, depending on the star. They're different shapes, different weights, all that. Oh, yeah, I, so I was not good with any there was, there was like one or two that you could get a handle on. But we also had a blow dart gun. Mm-hmm. And so that was the best thing in the world because somebody would be sitting on the couch, man, and, you know, just like stoned and watching something or whatever, and you'd slowly pick that blow dart up and go, <clears throat> and because it was wood paneling, you know, like we could destroy the walls and you really couldn't yeah. see if there was a hole in it or not. But, I mean, you just whiz one, like, three or four inches away from somebody's nose and just plant it in the wall right beside him. You know what I mean? Like, and, you go, thump, and they'd be like, oh, God. You know? Did you just, ever miss? I hit my buddy. Uh, he put his <laughs> yeah, hand, right? He put his hand up around the bullseye, right? All right. So you have that flap of skin. In Wait, between intentionally? Your, yes, because we were that good at it. I mean, it blowed, you'd be surprised how No, like you weren't that good at it. See, they thought they were. Right. You yes. thought, okay. It's amazingly accurate, though. Uh-huh. I mean, because the longer the tube is, the, the, seriously, it's like a musky. Or, I'm sorry, a musket. Did you not shoot him in the hand? I shot him in the <laughs> webbing between his index <laughs> finger and his thumb. And we were really, really stoned at the time. And it put a hole in one side and came out the other end. So he had to basically, you know, pull the dart out from yeah. both sides of his hand. But he had these two holes in his hand. And you could see clearly down into the hand. Like, there's no blood. It was just a hole. But you could look down into Craig's hand. We are just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And how old were you when you did this? Like 19 and right. stoned. You know what I mean? Just like, dude, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. He's like, it's okay. <laughs> Doesn't really hurt now. Uh, looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would be considered stupid or dangerous? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Steven. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So, a good way to sum up how my parents were towards my brothers and I, who were my heroes growing up, is they love to say, I bet you won't do that again, huh? So we would practice that as much as we could because, like you guys uh, brought up earlier, Evil Knievel was our hero. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, did you ever see him do anything successfully? No. Nobody, no, I only heard the stories. But, okay. But you had toys. You got to remember, like. I know, but why like, was he such no, a hero everything, when he ev- sucked at everything? Ev- but, but everything we did was based on that. So, so we used to have the $6 million man was a toy that we played with. It was fictional, but the idea was this guy was such an idiot. Like, he crashed a rocket or something. But and now he's body. bionic at least, you know, right? Like, everything was just, like, based on disaster. <laughs> you know, it was like a Bermuda Triangle disaster. Right, Quick right. Quicksand disaster. disaster. You know what I mean? Quicksand was, like, the single yeah. biggest threat to us growing up, even though it wasn't. Your inherent belief. You never is that knew when you would you step, step in sand, you're going to die. I was scared of quicksand as well. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, like you know, sometimes on the eighteen, they even ran into it. Yes, they did often. Yeah. So, what did you do, Stephen? Well, my brothers and I, we wanted to always see how high we could climb stuff and how uh, well we could jump off of it. I was good and for half of that. I might climb something high, but it, you, you were not going to convince me to jump off of it. Yeah, so uh, we started with houses, uh, or yeah, well, that's what we started with a house down the block uh, when we were kids, and then we would jump off trees, uh, we'd jump off huge rocks into swimming holes, sometimes huge rocks onto the ground, and then just pretty much anything and everything we could find. Anybody get hurt? Uh, none that we ever had to go to the hospital, but a few times that we should have. <laughs> okay. Uh, there but, were probably a few times where one of us may have got a concussion, 
but we just walked it off because, you know, manly mm -hmm. men. Well, back in the day, but, I mean, uh, that's what you were told to do. Like, I just shake it off. You'll be right. fine. And uh, But I do know that we're all paying for it now because we're all in our, you know, uh, 30s at varying spots. And we all have bad knees, bad ankles, <laughs> bad back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that's what happens. It catches up. Yeah. My Even buddy, if you survive the initial. Same apartment where I used to do the blowgun. Uh, my buddy Brett, he lived in the, he lived in the back uh, bedroom, which was where the back porch was. This goes into an alley. So it's a three-story building, and uh, there's a fire escape that goes down the back. It's a set of stairs that go down to a platform that go down to another little set of steps. But about 12 feet off the ground is the first platform. Right. And then there is a uh, latch that you can lower the stairs that will complete the final end of the process right. if you're in that situation. Well, Brett never used he never used the steps to get into the house because he thought the coolest thing in the world would be to come in through the back and surprise everybody. Well, of course, yeah. he left that way. He like he'd bring a date up. He wouldn't want anybody to know. He'd come in that way, whatever. Well, that that fire escape was never really used until we moved in, and the place had been on fire before, and that's why they put the fire escape in. But that latch was really really hard to push down and open mm -hmm. up. Well, he did it enough or over time, uh, it loosened up. So when he went to step on that platform, he was just going to hit the latch, and then the thing would just lower slowly, and he could hold right. it on. It would swing down. Well, now this thing is 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 damn near loose. So he steps on it one time, and I mean the platform just falls. Out. <laughs> and the yeah. stairs just drop immediately, like it. And there's Brett, like in the alley, on his bag, going ah ah. And my buddy Jeff's got the window open, and he hears Brett screaming down there and crying. And he looks out the window, and he's I mean this is a tough guy, but he's like holding his knee, <laughs> holding his shoulder. Something happened to his wrist, man. He dropped like twelve feet. Yeah, <laughs> just, just right right onto the concrete, man. Right on the pavement in the back. We're like you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like so stupid. Looking back at your life, what did you used to do? be considered stupid or dangerous. 206-421-ROCK. Right, now, look, I will say this. Uh, we all did dumb crap as kids. There's no doubt about it. Dumb crap as teenagers. I get it. The one thing, the one thing I would not mess with, right? You'd mess with cops. You'd mess with fire. You'd mess with explosives. You'd mess with bigger people. I did not mess with the local wildlife. Like, to me, and to this day, I hold that like, I'm not effing with animals. So, there's a couple. The guy here says, when I lived in San Antonio as a kid, I would stomp on fire anthills on the way to the bus stop. One day, I realized just how deep those things go. I sank into one up to my knee, spent the rest of the day in a calamine bath with bites all over my body. Like, I don't know much about fire ants, but I know enough about them that I'm not going to mess with them. Mm -hmm. And someone else says, when I was a kid in Louisiana, my buddy, he had a river behind his house, and we would throw rocks and sticks at the alligators minding their own business. I think it was pretty dangerous. Yeah. Alligators? <laughs> yeah. They're throwing sticks. And like, no, thank you. No, thank you, man. Let's piss off that gator, man. That's a, always a good idea. Hello, Jonesy. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Oh, it's good to hear from you guys, man. This is first time caller, long time listener. Rock on. And uh, want to say the happy hour is the best. Oh, oh right man. on, man. We're glad to know someone's listening yeah, to that. Man. Yeah, totally cool. Okay. Uh, basically, I was known in my high school uh, the craziest driver. Okay. And so what I could do with a car was totally crazy and where i'm gonna go with this is if you can imagine greenwood and 65th All right. um i i i had a, a 1985 dodge colt i reinforced the suspension on it so you could jump it so me and my buddy wait let me ask you something uh, real quick one, Did, one time hold on hold on hold on at the yeah. time you said greenwood and 65th so at the time whenever your story takes place the Greenwood and 65th look roughly the same way it does now. Is this basically the zoo? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's by the zoo. It's uh, yeah, um, it's known for the hills. Um, if you drive up it, it's just like this huge hill. Yeah, you're going. Kind of, I know where you're, if right, you're going yeah. down into into Ballard from that area west. Yeah, yeah it's it's San Francisco. Yeah, and then that's going west, but I was going east towards Green Lake. Okay, um, gotcha. Same difference. Back in the eighties, and um, so. Me and my buddy, we, we hit about 65 off the, and we launch off, off the, the, off the hill, and literally we look down and there's a police car. Did you go over and top go of the police over, car? Over the top of the police car. I know this sounds crazy, but literally we jumped over the police car and I landed halfway down the hill and that police car stood there and I went down, down, down. 
and then there's a right corner, and that police car saw me go all the way down to the bottom of the hill, and he just started slowly going up the hill and said, forget it. He didn't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even bother. That's cool. I mean, I think both of us, we, like, looked at each other going over, and, yeah, I, what I used to do with a car was, Crazy. Yeah, that sounds crazy. It's amazing you still had suspension left. Up. I know. As long as you scream yeehaw when you do it. Mm -hmm. I just always think about, uh, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off where the guys take the Ferrari for the joy. Oh, yeah. And like, you know, like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. God, he's going to fly into the air like slow motion. That's slow mo <laughs> <is> <laughs> just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would be considered stupid or dangerous? 206 421 Rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chica, chica. Right, that guy's so just kind of <laughs> greasy when it starts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Jay. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Ah, first time caller, a long time listener. Well, well, welcome to the it. show. I feel like I'm on the Tom Like a show. <laughs> there you go. Ah. I was uh, 12 years old. I thought uh, going down through the woods was on an old shed. And it had an, a nifty box inside. It was wooden. And uh, it said danger, explosives. And it was a case of dynamite. And uh, all 12-year-olds should have a case of dynamite to take home and stick up <laughs> in your attic. Mm -hmm. You know, that uh, that's always something to amuse the dad when he finds it a couple of months later. And it's all oozy, you know. It's got uh, sparkly stuff on top of it, white. I guess it uh, could set itself off. but uh, Wait, it exploded in your home? No, no, no. I put it up in the attic, and my dad found it about two months later. And it was uh, oozing. It was, uh, I guess, ready to take off by itself. And it gets to that point, dynamite uh, kind of can do its own thing. Uh, what does your father say when he discovers this case of dynamite that his kid brought into the house? Well, he's uh, he's taken his belt off several times before. <laughs> this was uh, surpassing that. All he did was uh, he come down and he was just white faced, really good, and uh, had me take it back up and put it back in the shed. I couldn't believe we'd drive it back up there. I can't either. I thought about it. Yeah, I think I'm going to call someone. Mm -hmm. like, like, I just don't know what to do with this, but it's dynamite. Although that yeah. said, I can't imagine being 12 years old and finding a case of dynamite. I found dynamite before. <laughs> no, just because yeah, I know yeah. we would have set something off. There, we, there's no way we wouldn't have. We used, right? to, uh, we used to do in uh, college, uh, in geology, we would take a couple field trips every semester, whatever. So typically, it, the, the mountains are so steep in West Virginia, they've got to blow them open. Yeah. So, but on those levels are all these, you know, thousands and millions of years of rock. Sure. So you go up there and get fossils and check out, and that guy go, here's when this happened. Here's when this right, happened. Right, it's right. just like it's a roadmap to the history of the world. All know? 6,000 years of it, yeah. But they'd leave dynamite up there because they were blowing all that stuff out. So we found a couple sticks. And, and at this point in time, 20, 21 years old, and the, the professor's like, oh, God. You know what right. I mean? Because like, that's what they blew the mountain with, but someone just left some up there. So, like, just random dynamite sticks laying around. You're like, Jesus. Did you ever light any off? No. If you were 12 and no. found it, do you think you would have lit it off? Yes. Yeah. I was yes. There's no doubt in my mind. But you don't know how long the wick is. Again, I mean, 12, the time, right, the timing you don't think about it. I, you're right, but people would. Mm. Oh, without Kids question. Would. Without question. Like I said, if I'm a kid, knowing all the stuff we did, which is no different than any other kid, if we found a case of dynamite, I'm sure we would have blown well, one up and gotten in all the trouble that, that comes with that. But I have no doubt we would have set it off within 10 minutes. I mean, it. you know, M80 is a mini stick of dynamite. Right. And, and essentially, you know, we had those plentifully. But you know, your but parents would buy you M80s around July 4th, right? They'd buy a bunch of other stuff. But that was a small percentage. They never came home and said, hey, we also got your stick of dynamite. And they weren't my favorite either because I, I like the sparkling things. I like the stuff that spun around, like Roman candles, something that shot something that was colorful or whatever. And these were just like, ba-boom. So, yeah, they're just loud. Yeah, I mean, other than that, they really don't. But that was the fun. I was I wild. Want I want to see, I want to see, I want to see stuff on fire sparkling. I do too. I don't like, yeah, it was that's okay. Why, that's why to me a smoke bomb even sucks. The smoke stinks. bombs were funny, but we always did you them know, in school. Like, so yeah. it wasn't. In outdoors, I'm like, what to smell? But in school, they were, they were fantastic. Looking back at your life, what did you used to do that would uh, be considered stupid or dangerous? We've got your emails coming up next for the men's room at kisw.com.
This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today.